Hi, I'm Dr. Ritter from CardioGage.com. I'm a cardiologist in New York. This video is about a torvastatin. Who should be on it and why? If you've got questions about the side effects or general information about the medicine, check out a torvastatin 1. That's my first video about the medicine. There are two main groups of people who are on a torvastatin. The first, people who've had a stroke, heart attack, or stent, or other blood vessel problem. The second group of people have not yet had any of these things happen to them, and hopefully they won't. Let's take a look at the first group. In one study, people who'd already had a stroke or heart attack were given a torvastatin or given a sugar pill, a placebo, to see what a torvastatin did to see if it helped. Over a period of about three years, the people who got the atorvastatin had a 12% chance of having another stroke or heart attack or a stent. The people who got the placebo had a 25% chance of having another stroke or heart attack. So it actually made a pretty big difference. It decreased the chance of stroke or heart attack and stenting by 50%, from 25% chance down to a 12% chance. It's pretty good. It turns out that over 10 years, if a person has already had a blood vessel problem, if they don't take a torvastatin or a similar medication, they've got about a 50% chance of having another problem. That's really high. If they were to take a torvastatin 80 milligrams a day for those 10 years, then the chance would be something more like 25%. It's still not great, but it's a lot less than 50%. Let's take another look at it from the doctor's point of view. I have about 800 patients in my practice who've had heart attack, stroke, or stent. I think that's about average probably for a cardiologist. If I were to not give those patients a torvastatin, then 400 of them would have another stroke or heart attack or stent over the next 10 years. That's a lot. If I were to give all of those patients a torvastatin 80 milligrams per day, or something similar, about 200 of them would have another blood vessel problem over the next 10 years. So 200 is a lot and not good, but it's only half as bad as it would be without the medication. So you can see from my point of view, if I give the medicine to everybody who's had this type of problem, then over the next 10 years, I'm gonna prevent 200 strokes, heart attacks, stenting procedures, hospitalizations for chest pain, all that stuff. And that's a big difference. So that's why the doctors are so pushy with the medicine. Decrease the chance of stroke or heart attack by a lot. In fact, the benefit is so great that for people who've had strokes and heart attacks, if the doctor doesn't offer them a torvastatin or a similar medication, and then the person has another stroke or heart attack, the doctor could be sued. I'm not saying anybody should do that, but just making a point. And what about all those nasty statin side effects? You can check out my Torvastatin 1 video where I talk about those if you want to. But are they really that nasty compared to strokes and heart attacks? There's a 1 in 5 chance of muscle aches, so very common. And probably the main reason why statins get so much bad press, because indeed, a lot of people take the medication and it causes them to hurt. But 80% of people take the medicine and it doesn't cause them to hurt. That's really a nuisance side effect rather than something life-threatening because you stop the medicine and the symptom goes away. There is about a 1 in 10,000 chance of something really bad happening with the torvastatin, like liver failure, kidney failure, severe muscle damage. Those types of things actually can indeed happen, but they're very rare, about a 1 in 10,000 chance of that happening. So if you think about it, you have... 2,500 times more likely chance that the medicine will prevent a stroke or heart attack or a stent or a hospitalization for chest pain, prevent something bad. 2,500 times more likely to benefit in a meaningful way as compared to having something bad happen to you. That's an important number to keep in mind. So yeah, bad things can happen with a torvastatin, but it's unusual and much more common that it prevents something bad from happening. A lot of people ask me, well, doc, how about I just eat right, exercise, then I don't have to take that medicine, that pill, every day. And to that I say, that's a good idea, totally worth doing, but not enough, because the consequences 
of stroke and heart attack are so great, it's not worth taking a chance. But by taking the medicine, risk is decreased. By taking the medicine, eating right, and exercise, risk is decreased even more. So that's what I have to say about that. Okay, let's take a look at the second group. These are folks who have not yet had stroke, heart attack, or stenting, unlike the first group. I break group two down into five different categories. The first is people who have a terrible LDL cholesterol, that's the bad cholesterol, of 190 or more. Second category, folks with a bad family history of stroke or heart attack. For example, mom had a heart attack at 50, the brother had a heart attack at 40. If you've got a lot of heart disease in your family, then it makes a lot of sense to pay attention to the chance that you could have that and to do what you can to decrease risk. The third category people with a high calcium score of 300 or so. Calcium score is different from a calcium level in a blood test, totally different test. The calcium score is ordered by the doctor. It's kind of a fancy test, costs usually a couple hundred bucks to do it. The patient has to pay, usually insurance doesn't pay, and it's done when doctors and patients want to understand more about risk for heart disease. Category four, people who have had a high CRP blood test more than 2.0, and this is a test ordered by the doctor to help understand what's a person's risk for having stroke or heart attack in the future. The fifth category is probably the hardest one to understand, and that's folks who have a risk of 7.5% or more for stroke, heart attack, or stent over 10 years. Doctors determine that number, that risk percentage, by using a calculator. You can access that calculator on my website, cardiogage.com. You put in your cholesterol numbers and blood pressure, age, gender, smoking status, that type of thing. And then the thing will put out your risk over the next 10 years for stroke or heart attack. Anyway, if that number is 7.5% or more, then doctors are supposed to offer a torvastatin or similar medication. Let's look at each category in a little more detail. Okay, category one, LDL cholesterol of more than 190. The lifetime chance of getting a heart attack or stroke for someone who has really bad cholesterol like this is about 50% or more. So that's a very high chance of stroke and heart attack. If the person were to say, no, I don't want to take that medication, I'll take my chances. Then 50% chance of bad thing happening with the blood vessels. If the person takes a Torvastatin 80 milligrams a day, then that chance can be decreased, probably by about half to 25%. That's a big difference. You go from a one in two chance of stroke or heart attack or stent down to a one in four chance. It makes sense to take the medication. Okay, let's look at category two, people with a bad family history. People with a bad family history have about four times the chance of heart attack as someone who does not have a bad family history. And that translates to about a 20% or more chance over 10 years, and probably much more, frankly, over the lifetime. So, no atorvastatin, 20% chance of stroke heart attack over 10 years. They take the atorvastatin 80 milligrams per day, and that chance goes down to 10%. That's a big difference. I generally recommend the medication for people in this situation. Sometimes, for people with a bad family history, I'll check a calcium score or a CRP to get a better idea of the risk, but it would be appropriate to just take someone who's got a bad family history and give them the medication. Okay, on to category three, people with a high calcium score. As I mentioned, this is kind of a fancy test ordered by the doctor to check risk for heart disease. If the calcium score is greater than 400, it turns out that over four years, if a person does not take any medication to address the calcium score, then there's a 15% chance of something bad happening. If the person takes a statin medication, that chance was decreased down to 9%. So that's a pretty big difference. Okay, let's move on to category four. These are folks with a high CRP blood test of 2.0 or more. Doctors are encouraged to consider the medicine for folks in this category because it decreases chance of stroke and heart attack by about 50%. That's a big decrease and probably worth it uh, to take the medicine. Okay, let's look at the last category. These are people with a calculated risk of 7.5% or more over 10 years. Let's look at an example 
of someone whose risk is calculated at 10%. No atorvastatin, you got a 10% chance of bad blood vessel problem. You take atorvastatin 80 milligrams a day for 10 years, now it's a 5% chance. Let's take a look at this from the primary care doctor's point of view. The doc might have a thousand patients who have risk for stroke or heart attack of 10% or more. If the doc does not give the medication, 100 people will have stroke or heart attack over 10 years. But if the doc gives the medicine to all those people, 5% or 50 of them will have stroke, heart attack, or stent. That's a difference of 50 people. Of course, the doc wants to do that, so he or she will offer the medicine to try to accomplish that goal. So that's the end there. Atorvastatin, who should take it and why? I hope the video was informative. Please like and subscribe for more content and share. It helps. Uh, and uh, go, you can go to my website, cardiogage.com, for a calculation of your own risk for stroke and heart attack. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I will respond.